the jetpack will allow you to fly anywhere or if you're going down a long shaft soften your fall sufficiently that you will not die also this may seem extremely obvious but never use your flamethrower to fire down when you're flying you will light yourself on fire anyway five bonus levels total and to unlock all five you do indeed have to complete the levels all five or six of them on the hardest difficulty that's really tough if this game does not get your adrenaline going check your pulse dude you're dead that or using a trainer it is extremely intense from start to finish I personally say that the most fun is to play as the marine so many aliens and a single one could mean the death of you yes you have guns that'll keep them at a distance that also means you have to conserve your ammo try not to shoot if you're not fairly certain you're gonna hit and make sure to pick up all the guns along the way in spite of the urge you might have to just run also something that's really awesome for anybody who's watched the first two alien movies the face huggers you're walking around maybe you hear the little crawly sounds maybe you see an open egg and suddenly they just come at you taking up the entire screen really effective jolt something really great in this one that is there to some extent in the second one but just not quite as much is that all three races have very definite worst enemy types you'll really quickly discover that as an alien an enemy wielding a flamethrower is about as welcome as a positive HIV test for the marine it's a praetorian for the predator it's somewhere it's either a Praetorian or a Marine armed with like a smart gun or a minigun. In this, the Predator is slow but very powerful, much like a tank. The Marine is slow and weak until he finds big guns that make loud noises, at which point he becomes slow and somewhat more powerful. And the alien is fast but also very easy to kill. The alien is fast and a fairly effective killer but also very easy to kill. Regardless of who you play as, the predator takes a pounding before he goes down. The AI is somewhat varied, but a really nice feature is that civilians and sometimes marines as well may panic. However, the civilians may also keep their composure and put some serious hurt on you. Also, just because you hear them crying out in fear doesn't mean that they're not at all gonna hurt you. They might still sport a Molotov cocktail. Something kind of funny about the civilians with Molotov cocktails is they might at times panic so much that they'll torch one of their buddies or even themselves when they throw it. In this game, if you're an alien or a marine, because the predator can douse the flames, being on fire is incredibly intense. It's more pretty in the second one, but it is nowhere near as intense to be on fire. The really evil thing is that as the marine, yes, you will ensure the alien's death if you set them on fire, but they're not going to die right away. They're still coming at you, trying to claw at you. They can kill you, even if you've set them on fire. And something that's really cool is that if they're slightly too far away to be set on fire by the flamethrower, and you use it towards them, they'll stop right there and wait until there's no more flame, and then come at you. I'm sorry, but there are very few other games that I can think of that has anything like that. Part of what makes the Predator slow is switching weapons. It takes a lot of time. And for example, if you want to heal yourself with, you know, the little stick that he takes apart, like in the first movie, it will take, I think, a total of two seconds from when you switch to it to when you'll be completely ready to heal yourself. The disc is quite fast, though. I think the aiming is also slightly slower than it is in the second one. 
almost everything in this is a reference to at least one of the films. Something that really helps keep this game alive is all the randomization. Not all that many playthroughs are gonna go the exact same way. Enemies might show up at different points in the level, at least a certain distance away from each other. And I've honestly experienced a couple of lower level enemies morphing into a higher level one. Let me explain. If on playthrough one you meet two civilians, either not armed or only sporting, let's say, a pistol or maybe a Molotov cocktail, you might on playthrough three or four run into a marine sporting a pulse rifle instead of those two civilians. This is one thing that the first definitely has on the second game. This is one part where the first one is definitely better than the second game. There's also nice replayability in the ability to unlock cheats. All of these are dependent on the stats when you complete a given level. Anytime you complete a level, it'll tell you how well you did, and then there's this row of statistics on, under the word target. If these are empty, it means there's nothing to unlock as far as cheats go in that level. If there is one, then that number is what you have to reach or beat in order to unlock that specific cheat. A couple of my favorite cheats include Sniper Munch, in which you can headbite from any distance, as long as you line up the head. Pig Sticking, which turns the spear gun into a shotgun. John Woo mode is pretty fun, slow-mo. Not all of these are actually good, and do note you can't actually beat a level with them unless you've already completed that level. You can't use them to progress through the game. They're just fun. And at times very weird, like the one that turns people into stick figures. Or the rainbow color one. Other than the stick in the second Predator movie, the Predator here has all of the weapons of the two movies. And he has a pistol which is quite effective for taking out the aliens. The Marine, however, only really has the pulse rifle and the smart gun. You know, the smart gun is the one that they hold on a steady cam grip. No pistol, no shotgun, only on enemy Marines and civilians. He also has a pretty cool grenade launcher with regular grenades, frag grenades, proximity mine grenades. He has a so-called SADAR or something, which is a rocket launcher. And he has a very cool minigun that they were evil enough to actually force you to stand still to properly use. The aforementioned flamethrower. The smart gun tracks the enemies, but you do, so, you do still sort of have to aim. As the Marine, you get to use the motion tracker, and yes, it will respond to other things than aliens moving. This game doesn't particularly build up an atmosphere. Almost every level is, you know, very dark, and whenever you're the Marine, you run through abandoned areas. You know, it's the kind of thing that can't last forever. Maybe it's a good thing that the game is pretty short, because in the long run, that would get really irritating. As alien or predator, you'll learn to hate the sound of a sentry gun running and love the sound of one that is destroyed. I also like how in this one, they properly have them go from side to side, like in the film. I don't know why the ones in the second game are static until they find a target. At least the ones you come across. I think the ones in the in-game cinematics move. I don't know. The civilians of the Marines will instantly react. So just because you're sneaking up on them doesn't mean that you're gonna necessarily get them. In less than a second they can turn from not at all realizing you're there to doing everything they can to kill you. And as the alien, even a pistol can kill you if you're not careful. Being on fire will almost definitely kill you. Unless you have, like, full health when you caught fire. You regain health by headbiting and, to some extent, I think, clawing at dead bodies. 
the pistol causes splash damage. 